Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video about raw therapy. Uh, raw therapy is a image uh, adjustment tool uh, specifically around raw images. And so um, as I've been moving into Linux uh, more and more as my regular desktop environment that I've been using uh, operating system wise, um, I've really been wanting to focus on how I can get over using some of the tools that I have been using traditionally, such as Lightroom, Photoshop, etc. And so um, today I just wanted to show you some of the features of raw therapy and how you can go through doing some quick adjustments to uh, your photos with raw therapy to make them look better than what they came out of the camera at. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I am currently on... Um, Manjaro Linux using the GNOME uh, Windows uh, or desktop environment, I should say. Um, we are using Raw Therapy 5.8. Um, that's the current version, um, at least for Manjaro. And um, I'm not sure if there's a newer version out, but this version seems to work great for me. Um, so you can see we have our folder structure here off to the left here. Um, you can go to different hard drives that you have um, on your um, physical machine. Um, but within this, uh, I just have a demo folder. You could go to other folders. This is another folder with um, some images in here. And you can see they just pull up fine. Um, but in this demo folder, this is the image that I wanted to go through and edit real quick uh, and show you how easy it is to edit um, with some quick adjustments in raw therapy. So all you need to do is double click that image and it will open up the editing tool. And um, one of the things that um, I like to do is um, open up the before and after and lock it. So this kind of gives us our visuals of where we started at and where we're going to here. So um, I can open up this panel over here. You can see that we have our um, historiogram um, over here and we also have a um, navigator that allows us to move around. So like as we zoom in, you can see the little red square is about where we are viewing the image at. And we can also grab it and move it to different parts of the frame of the image here to uh, adjust this view. Um, but if you don't need the histori histogram, uh, you can just close that uh, panel section out uh, to give yourself some more room here. Um, we have our um, bar across the top here that has some various tools. Um, for instance, this shows us the um, metadata or, or um, uh, EXIF data for this particular image. I shot this on an XT30 with a 50 mil lens. Um, it was a old manual lens, a Super Tacomar uh, 50 mil 1.4. Um, so that lens, since it doesn't have the ability to send information to the camera, uh, the camera just assumes it's a 1.0. It was a 1.4 lens, and I believe I was shooting at 1.4 at the time with this. Uh, 1 550th of a second um, is our shutter speed, ISO 320 um, with um, minus uh, a third of a stop on the um, exposure compensation here. Um, but let's just close that out. Um, with this, um, we can lock out the exposure or lock out what, what the original version looked like when we open it up. So as we come in here into our um, different modules over here, like this is our exposure module. Like if I were to adjust the exposure a little bit, you can see that it adjusts this one, but not this one, so that we can see where we came from. Um, so let's go ahead and do, uh, you know, some quick adjustments of what you might have to do um, to adjust your photos to make them look a little bit better. So we have our exposure um, tab here. We're only gonna look at a few tabs um, today. Exposure, detail, and color. Um, those are probably where you're gonna be most of the time um, in order to adjust the, the look and feel of your photos. And so, like we showed before, um, we have exposure compensation and you can adjust that with small adjustments like so. Um, or you can do sweeping changes with the, um, the, the, the slider here. And so let's go back to zero because this, this particular image is exposed pretty decently. Uh, we just need to adjust a few things. Um, we can adjust lightness um, here, um, uh, contrast that uh, 
you know something that you could could do if necessary not really necessary in this in this case saturation if you wanted some more saturation but we're going to do some other things to to make it look better um, so let's go down to shadows and highlights. So this is one thing that I find myself doing all the time in Lightroom um, that you may not necessarily um, want to use anymore because of some other tools that are available. Um, so let me turn off my camera there so you can see the full panel here. Um, so whenever we have any of these modules here, you can see that they are not turned on. So as soon as I turn it on here, I click that, now it's on, and so now it will start adjusting. So you can see we've got a little bit of an overexposure, um, losing some of the detail in her forehead area. So if we were to start increasing the highlight slider, which would actually reduce the highlight, um, exposure, um, you can see that we get some of that information back out of the image. Um, the same with shadows. So we can see with her hair, we're losing some of the shadow detail of her hair. And so as we start bringing up the shadows, you can see that we can get that detail back. Um, and that's really good. And that's one way that I used to edit a lot in Lightroom in order to get some of the, these details back. But um, Raw Therapy has a pretty slick tool called Dynamic Range Compression. And I really like this tool a lot because it basically mixes both of those things that I find myself doing all the time, is lowering the highlights and increasing the shadows. It does it in one fell swoop. So let's go ahead and turn on this module. And as you can see, as I start increasing the, dy the dynamic range amount, um, it's reducing the um, highlights here on her forehead and also you can see the um, shadows are starting to increase in her hair there and so it's really killing two birds with one stone and it really brings like this is literally the only adjustment that we've done to this photo so far and you can see over here in our original before state how much it has increased the um, detail of this photo that we lost in the hair over here um, it brings out some of the red highlights in her hair, um, etc. And so I really, really like this dynamic range. Um, we also have a vignette filter. So if you wanted to come in here, uh, say you had a lens that wasn't quite covering the sensor of your camera very well, you could um, adjust that, um, increase the, the vignette um, in order to bring out those shadows that the vignette had caused. Or if you wanted to uh, purposely put some vignette in there to stylize the image a little bit, we can do that a little bit here with this image. Um, and you can see turning it off and on um, the difference in what that vignette is doing. Um, so we can also change the feather. So that's how far out it comes and blurs the image. The roundness is, um, how round it is as opposed to just being in the corners like this. Um, let's see, I can show you probably more obviously. So like you can see how it's more square as I bring it out here and more round when I bring it over here. And so let's bring it back over here to about there. And we wanna do probably a little bit more round, I would say just to focus more on her face. Um, one thing that you can use that's a, it's a cool tool, use it a lot in, in Lightroom, is the graduated filter. And um, the graduated filter, um, while not very useful in this image here, um, say in landscape photography where you're trying to darken up the sky a little bit, maybe it's slightly overexposed, you could use this to um, increase the, uh, increase or decrease the, uh, uh, strength of the exposure on that particular Im image, ugh, image area. And so you can see we can also adjust the angle. This can be done by manually manipulating this um, crosshair or you can also do it over here. Um, and so that's a, a cool tool that's really useful for uh, landscape photography. Not super useful in this case here, but um, Maybe we'll do another video on that. Um, so let's go to our sharpening, um, or I should say our detail. And this allows you, so maybe if we had some issues with sharpness, um, 
we could adjust the sharpness here um, with this um, with these tools. Um, but I didn't want to go over that. I, I wanted to show a, a cool tool that I like that they have. Um, this is similar to a tool in uh, Lightroom and it's haze removal. So I'm going to pull down the strength and enable that. And so you can see as we start to bring this up, it's going to cause some contrast and also a little bit of um, saturation. So if you had parts of your image or an image that was particularly um, washed out looking, uh, maybe uh, you're shooting a landscape or a horizon that was really getting crushed by the, the light and the, the, the light source, maybe it's the sun, whatever the case may be. This allows you to really boost that quite a bit and um, you can do it where it's luminance only or it also does the full color um, range as well. And so on this, you can see, let, uh, let me turn, uh, turn it off. You can see that haze really makes our image pop quite a bit and brings out a lot of the reds and a lot of the greens in the background there, as opposed to our, our before state, you can really see it's making this image pop quite a bit. Um, and then finally, let's look at our, our color. Um, our color tab here and we can really adjust some cool things here so for instance vibrance uh, we're not needing it too much in this particular image but if you wanted to you could increase or decrease the vibrance of this image now what's nice is they allow you to protect skin tones and so if I check that um, as I increase it it's not going to adjust my skin tones as much as it is the other colors that are outside the range of the skin tone and you can also um, adjust what type of skin tone that you want here and manipulate that so if you have someone with a different uh, complexion you could be able to adjust it manually on to, to be within the range of what their skin tones are um, but we're not going to use that one it's not really necessary for this image um, another uh, module that I wanted to talk about um, in particular was the color toning. Um, I used to use this all the time in uh, Lightroom and it's called split toning in Lightroom but here um, they call it saturation two colors and so when you enable this um, we're gonna get an ugly color to start with. It's trying to make our highlights green tinted um, shadows being blue that that's not the bad part it's these highlights here so if we start and we bring this over closer to our orange you're gonna see that it makes the the skin tone specifically um, where our highlights are uh, a little bit slightly different color and we can bring the saturation of that down a little bit or increase it if we wanted to um, give it some warmth to the picture um, so let's turn this off and on you can see it's, there's a slight difference there. Same with our blues. Um, if we want to make the, the shadows give it more blue, um, this orange and blue uh, is kind of a, a technique that people use all the time to give stuff a more film-like look um, if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to turn that off. And uh, But that's something that you can use that really is helpful, especially in stylizing uh, images to get them to look a certain way. Um, but as you can see, um, we just went through a couple of the modules here that are available to us. And, um, you know, we've taken this photo um, from something that was kind of washed out with lack of contrast and saturation. And with a few um, adjustments here, we've got a much nicer looking photo um, that we can utilize for whatever it is that we're trying to do with it, whether it's print or digital, whatever the case may be. But anyways, um, that was pretty much it. Um, I, I uh, probably am going to be doing some more videos like this uh, in the future. But um, as you can see, you know, th there's some tools that are available to us. We don't have to pay the Adobe tax forever um, if we don't necessarily want to. And we have some capabilities here. Um, and with other tools um, like GIMP and and whatnot, we have some tools out there that are perfectly capable of what we're trying to accomplish without um, paying for proprietary software. So anyways, that's the end of this video. Um, 
thanks for making it to the end if you did, and I will talk to you guys later.